Kablam! Pop Art, Op Art in the Moaz Collection. We decided to use John Mattis's Kablam! as the leadoff image for this exhibition because it is a quintessentially pop art image that represents the forceful impact that pop art had on the art world beginning in the 1960s. It shows a comic book superhero punching a hole through the picture plane straight out at us, presumably as he knocks out the bad guy, a common occurrence in superhero comic book narratives. Bold and bright graffiti-like objects and paint strokes surround the face of the figure, and this is in keeping with John Mattis' style. He was also known as Crash. He made his art career as one of the first graffiti artists uh, and put graffiti art on the map to be recognized for the first time by the fine art world. Born in the Bronx in 1961, he began by painting the sides of trains and then, by 1980, transitioned to art galleries and curated a highly successful exhibition titled Graffiti Art Success for America at Fashion Moda in New York. He represents the later neo-pop generation of artists who combined the roots of the pop art movement with the graffiti movement. And in that way, he's indebted to Andy Warhol, considered by many to be the leading artist of the pop art movement, as he incorporated images from everyday popular culture such as Campbell's Soup advertising, into his fine art images. Warhol and his art are so ingrained in our idea of fine art now, with Warhol becoming one of the most famous and most wealthy 20th century American artists, produced images such as newspaper ads, comic book strips, and commercial advertising became suitable as subjects as well as the source of the style of contemporary art. The most famous of Warhol's Campbell's Soup Can pieces is the 32 Campbell's Soup Cans group in the Museum of Modern Art, which is considered the art piece that launched Warhol as the leader of the pop art movement. Dated 1962, it is now 60 years old, this work rocked the art world when it was shown in Warhol's first single artist show at the Ferris Gallery in Los Angeles. Each of the separate paintings was labeled a different flavor of Campbell's soup, and they were displayed on shelves as is for sale as cans of soup. Warhol had been a successful commercial graphic artist in New York up until this time, and in this piece, daringly decided to offer up what he knew of that type of art and maintained that it was a comment on American consumerism. The art world initially wasn't buying it and it turned away from Warhol's works, including a gallerist close to the Ferris Gallery who, tongue-in-cheek, sold real Campbell soup cans, stating that, quote, his were cheaper, end quote, ridiculed for daring to fly in the face of abstractionism, which was still considered the dominant American art movement. It didn't take long before Warhol's new brand of art, based on everyday commercial imagery, took off as the latest thing and in particular, the artist's soup cans became in high demand. He turned to serograph printing as a way to meet this demand, highly appropriate since his art was based on mass-produced printing. And Moaz has a serograph of vegetarian vegetable alphabet soup, which is actually one of the rarer Campbell's soup can images Warhol produced. Julian Stanzek, a Polish-born artist who fled Europe during the World Wars, and is the artist credited with giving the title to the op art movement, represents the type of non-objective abstract art that Warhol rebelled against. Stanzak's early life is the story of wartime hardship as he contracted encephalitis in a Siberian work camp at a young age and the disease left him with a permanently damaged right arm. At age 14, he and his family were relocated to a Polish refugee camp in Uganda, Africa, and it was there that he learned to paint with his left hand. After the end of the Second World War, he immigrated to the U.S. via London and settled in Cleveland, Ohio, where he received his BFA followed by an F MFA at Yale. In coming to the United States, as so many European artists did during or immediately after the war, Stanzak brought with him 
the prevailing European artistic trend towards geometric abstraction that had been promoted by highly influential instructors at the Bauhaus School of Architecture and Design in Germany. At its height during the period between the two world wars, the Bauhaus School fostered a reliance on purity of geometric balance and regularity as the fitting style for the modern era. All unnecessary adornment was to be shunned as it represented the past and was not looking forward to the modern industrialized age. While Julian Stanzek was born too late to participate in the height of the Bauhaus movement, he was born in 1928, and the Bauhaus started to fade from prominence by the early 1930s as Hitler deplored it. Uh, Stanzek nevertheless reflects the lasting legacy of these teachings in his series of geometrically abstract prints on view in this exhibition at, at MOAS. Stanzek was a contemporary of Warhol's and had his first major show titled Julian Stanzak Optical Paintings at the Martha Jackson Gallery in New York in 1964. This exhibition gave the movement its name and Stanzak's reputation grew as his vividly colorful works fascinated the public and the art world alike with the way the straight lines in them seemed to vibrate based on the optical phenomenon created by placing contrasting colors next to each other. This is the first time this kind of art had been explored. Arresting and beautiful, Julian Stanzak's prints in the Moaz collection appear as modern and current as they did some 60 years ago when first on view. Robert Rauschenberg is the last of the major artists in this exhibition that I would like to focus on today. Another giant of the pop art movement of the 60s and 70s, Rauschenberg took a slightly different approach with his art and turned to a collage method, or he called them, quote, combine paintings, unquote. Rauschenberg was born in Port Arthur, Texas in 1925 and attended the Kansas City Art Institute in 1947 before traveling to Paris to study at the Academy Julian. He returned to the States in 1948 and studied under Joseph Albers, who had been one of the lead teachers at the Bauhaus School and immigrated to the U.S. to teach at Black Mountain College near Asheville, North Carolina. Having experienced geometric abstraction thoroughly through this period of his study, Rauschenberg evidently felt modernism needed an update. His style initially shocked the prevailing art critics even more than Warhol as he attached all manner of objects or material to his work, including garbage, bedding, ladders, taxidermy birds and other animals, old rubber tires, etc. All of it was showing up in Rauschenberg's works, just attached to the paintings. Taking Warhol's idea to the next level, Rauschenberg felt that a truly honest commentary on